These Brontosaurus toys have just pathetic little necks. No sauropod could have gotten away with a neck this long when it was just one single small round beam like this. Sauropod necks were structured more like a trussed crane boom, because as their necks got longer, the vertebrae had to have more leverage to support their neighbors, and the muscles and tendons needed more leverage to hold the neck up and move it around. But they couldn't just scale up the vertebrae their ancestors had and expect that to work. That is too heavy and far too much bone for a growing animal to have to build. Bones aren't free. You know what's free? Air. It was the diverticula that expanded. Those air-filled chambers that already existed around and eventually inside their neck vertebrae, which gave the bones a way to sort of inflate and get the mechanical advantage they needed without becoming far more heavy and without costing so much in minerals and nutrients to grow. There's actually recent research looking at this diverticulum in the chest of soaring birds. They can inflate or deflate it to change the mechanical advantage of one of their pectoral muscles. And I wonder if sauropod necks had some kind of pneumatic muscular function like that. But even if they didn't, for necks this long, you need a broad air-filled frame, not a noodle.